Hello everyone, in this lab we are going to discuss torsion. The first topic that we are going to cover is the torsion formula. When a straight prismatic bar is subjected to moment about its longitudinal axis, it twists about that axis, shearing stresses are developed, and a single stress resultant, the twisting moment T, is developed on each transverse cross section. The straight prismatic bar of circular cross section is the most common structural element subjected primarily to torsion. Consider, for example, the transmission shaft used in conjunction with most engines. Because of symmetry, planes normal to all the axes of the bar remain plane during deformation, and the shearing stress tau varies linearly with rho, the radius distance from the axis of the shaft. Consider a circular shaft loaded in torsion. Each element of dA located at rho is subjected to a force of dF equals tau dA. The torque produced by this force is dT equals rho tau dA. Therefore, to get the torque for the entire cross section, we need to integrate over the cross section. However, using the proportionality of triangles, we can recognize that tau equals rho by the radius of the shaft times tau max. Therefore, combining the equation, we get this. The integral term now depends only on the geometry of the shaft. It is a property of this cross section known as the polar moment of inertia, J. Therefore, the torsion formula is given by T is equal to tau max by the radius of the shaft times J. And the shear stresses at the intermediate distance, rho, is tau equals t rho by j. Either of the above two equations is often referred to as a torsion formula. Now we are going to look at how to calculate the polar moment of inertia of solid shaft and hollow shaft. For solid circular shaft, the radius of a solid shaft, the polar moment of inertia, J, is J equals pi by 2 times the radius of solid shaft to the power of 4. For a hollow circular shaft with the inner radius of Ci and outer radius of Co, the polar moment of inertia, J, is J equals pi by 2 times the outer radius to the power of 4 minus inner radius to the power of 4. The second topic that we are going to study is determination of angle of twist. Consider a circular shaft of radius C subjected to a positive torque. The main assumptions here that the line on the surface of the shaft BA remains straight after the rotation to BA prime and also the material remains linear elastic. The plane cross section remains circular after twisting, which is only true for circular shapes. Based on these assumptions and this figure, the shear strain gamma will be gamma equals the displacement from point A to A prime by length L. The angle of twist phi will be phi equals the displacement from point A to point A prime by the radius of the shaft. Equating equations one and two, the formula shear strain can be written as, for the points within the shaft, we can rewrite equation three as, gamma equals rho times phi over the length, where rho is radial distance from the centroid of the shaft. We also know from the Hooke's law that gamma max equals tau max over the shear modulus of elasticity, g. And tau max is tau max equals t times c by j. Combining equations 3, 5, and 6, the angle of twist for the entire shaft is given by this equation. When a shaft is subjected to several different torques, or the cross-sectional area or shear modulus changes from one region of the shaft to the next, we can use the following equations. Later on in this video, we will show one example which will discuss this kind of problem. The third topic that we're going to study is design of transmission shafts.
The most common use of circular shafts is to transmit mechanical power from one device or machine to another. For example, the transmission shaft of an automobile. The power is transmitted through the rotary motion of the shaft, and the amount of power transmitted depends on the magnitude of the torque and the speed of rotation. Knowing torque, T, and the allowable shear stress, tau allow, the transmission shafts can be designed using the torsion formula. Here, design means finding the size of the shaft cross section. Now we are going to look at an example with statically determinate shaft. The copper pipe has an outer diameter of 40 millimeters and an inner diameter of 37 millimeters. If it is tightly secured to the wall at A and three torques are applied to it as shown, determine the absolute maximum shear stress developed in the pipe and total rotation of end B. The shear modulus of elasticity G is given 38 gigapascals. First, we need to find the maximum torque. Using section method, the maximum torque is 90 newton meters. Therefore, the maximum shear stress in the pipe is given tau max equals T max times C by J. The total rotation of end B can be calculated as follows. Now we are going to look at an example with statically indeterminate shaft. The first step is to draw the free body diagram at A and C by solid shafts AB and BC. The shafts are made of steel with G equals to 75 times 10 to the power 3 megapascals. Determine the maximum shear stress in the shafts when a torque of 6 kN meter applied to the pulley. The first step is to draw the free body diagram. Step two is write the equations of equilibrium. Step three, write the condition for compatibility of deformations. Solve equation two together with equation one for the unknown reactions. Thus we get. Step five, calculate the maximum shear stress. I hope this tutorial was helpful. Best of luck with the lab.